is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850-24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others, just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Should I pray? Should I pray? You can pray if you want to. It's on you. All right. No problem. All right. yeah. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. And we also, praise God, have a prophet with us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This, and the Lord is going to use us to work together. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get into the Word. He's going to use us to do this together, that 
he be glorified in this, okay? So we're, we're going to have a very powerful, powerful broadcast, and um, it's really late. It's after 3 in the morning on September 21st, 2021, and I have to say that for record's sake and for the law. Now, I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles and turn to Second Chronicles, and no, we're not going to do the familiar uh, chapter 7, but we're going to go to ver uh, chapter uh, 18. And while you're finding that, let me open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, we come before you asking you to forgive us, forgive us. for all of our sins, all our shortcomings, us. Yes, our faults, our wrongs, Thank everything you. we have said, done, thought and felt yes, that is not pleasant in your sight. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to give us a word. Yes, give me a word yes, to share. I have nothing written, yes, but you already wrote it. Yes, <laughs> I'm asking, Lord, that you pour out your wisdom yes, that we should hear what thus saith the Lord yes, and that we should get into you. your word yes, and do what you said. We just thank you for everything. Everything. We just thank you for everything. Ask that you move in a body way. Yes. Minister to those that you have handpicked yes. to sit around the television, yes. the computer, yes. or driving in their car, or whichever way they're listening to this or watching it. Yes. Minister to them, Lord, because we are in dire need. Indeed of your hand to move in our lives. Oh, glory. And we just thank you for everything. Some of us are fasting. Yes. Some of us are just praying. Yes. All of us are going through something Some. or another. Some. But at any rate, yes. we need you yes. to move in a mighty way. Yes. Show us your glory. Yes. Allow us to see yes. that you're with us. Yes. We love you, Lord. And we ask that you have mercy. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 Again, I'd like to ask you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. And I'm reading out of the King James Version. And It's going to be a very powerful. Let, let's just go as the Lord leads. But I, I still like to ask you to turn your Bible to Second Chronicles chapter eighteen, and I'm coming out of the King James version. And here we go. Now, now Jehoshaphat had riches. This verse one, and honor in abundance, and joined affinity with Ahab, and for certain years, he went down to, a excuse me, and after certain years, he went down to Ahab, to Samaria, and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance. And for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as, that as thy people. Yes. And we will be with thee in the war. Yes. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Yes. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together the, of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides? that we might inquire of him? 
And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes. And they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Kanana, or Kanano, had made him horns of iron and <laughs> said, Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. I don't know. <laughs> said, speak thou good. Oh, God. Say what the other ones are saying. Just copy it. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God said, that will I speak. Mm -hmm. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me? In the name of the Lord. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle. But put thou on thy robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, it is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore, he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit, the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. Yeah. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. 
I guess you, you're going to do this. Right? Yeah. 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 Deuteronomy chapter 18. And let's notice verse 17. No, let's go back to verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods even that prophet shall die and if thou say in thine heart how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord if the thing follow not nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of it. Let's say our grace. Father, again in the name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. Thank you for this, this word. Thank yes. you for this time of gathering. Yes. I'm asking that you pour into thy servant, that you may use thy servant to share what you give me to share. Thank you, Thank you for the studio. Thank you for the equipment. Thank you for everything and everywhere that you have blessed this ministry. I ask that you bless those that pour into the ministry, those that sow into the ministry this morning or whenever they're watching this broadcast. I ask that you replenish what they share, and that it be used in the ministry where it's supposed to go as you direct. Thank you, Thank you. for everything. Hallelujah. And now, allow me to decrease that you may increase. Fill me yes. with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Orchestrate this whole, uh, this whole broadcast. Yes. Allow me to decrease that Hallelujah. you may increase. We rebuke the devil and we plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, oh glory and we thank you for everything have mercy Father. minister to your children because we are all asking you to speak to us everyone that you have watching this broadcast or listening to it by cd or or, or audio cassette or watching by dvd or vhs or computer or youtube or whatever any platform yes. you have a watching for a reason yes. and now you speak holy speak. Glory. <laughs> glory to us in jesus name we thank you and we pray yes. amen. amen 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 <laughs> go ahead brother let god be you. ministry the word Ministry means service, a service unto God. Yeah. It is very, very important that when you decide to embark upon entering into the ministry, that it is not something you feel like doing. Neither is it something that someone else put you up to. It is very important that when you enter into the ministry, that you enter into it because you've been called by God 
Because when you're called by God, he's going to train you first. And then he's going to send you out. I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles real quick to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now this word perfection in the Greek means maturity. Not, a, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Brother Paul was saying, let us not keep going over the same thing. Amen. There's a lot of times that people attend ministry and during the time of what they might call or, or be told that is called training, they might keep hearing the same messages over and over and over again. And what happens is, when they are sent out, when man decides to send them out, they go out sounding like the one that they just sat under. That's right. That's right. And that's what they do. It's very important that your training comes from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes. That he is the one that teaches you. That's right. Because... The devil, he trains people too. Yes. And there's many other beliefs out there mm -hmm. that claim that they are serving the only true and living God, and they're not. That's right. Paul said, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, that means the basics, let us go on to maturity uh -huh. in ministry yeah. because it's important that God use us ministers, us leaders, those of us in the fivefold ministry to be used by him to feed his people as he would use us to do. Because as, as, as listen, catch this revelation. The things that the Lord teach you are going to come into play later on, at another time. Why? Because this this walk that we're on, this is a this is a faith walk, and we are going to face many trials. And every time God brings you through one trial, there's always going to be another trial in the wings waiting for you to get to a certain point. It's, don't ever, listen, when you hear ministers say, well, all you do is give your life to the Lord and your life will be peachy keen, it'll be easy, you'll never have to go through trials again, God will always come to your beck and call, soon as you call God, he'll appear. No, that's, that's, that's <laughs> not accurate. Amen. Amen. In the beginning of your walk, when God wants to establish himself with you, he may do that then. Right. But once you get to a certain level in him, once yeah. you get to a certain place it in changes. him, the, the things change. once he takes you up a notch or two, yes. when you call on God, yeah. he might not come right away. That's right. And the older people could tell you that because they, they got a saying, you know. Uh -huh. The older people would say, and it's not written per se, uh -huh. but it's implied in scripture, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on, on time. time. On time. Oh, glory. Yes. He's always on time. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's important that the ministry you go to or that you fellowship with are feeding you. Uh -huh. Because if they're feeding you, then when you start going through things, you're going to be equipped and you're going to be prepared. Right. Now, if you're not equipped and you're not prepared, then you're really going to be going through some things. Right. It's going to be rough. Right. 
Paul said, again, therefore, verse 1, Hebrews 6, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Then he said, verse 3, and this will we do if, if God, God permits. permits. What will we do? We'll go on. Right. We'll go to the next level. Right. But in order to go to the next level, you have to master or understand the basics. Because everything is built on the basics. Right. Verse 4, Paul said, as the Lord told him to write, For it is impossible, impossible. for those who were once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift, which is the bread of life, uh -huh. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, which they witnessed the movement of God, uh -huh. and have tasted the good word of God, which is spiritual food, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, right. seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. That's right. They become apostates. Yes. Not apostles. Right. Apostates. Apostates. Because Without understanding what you're learning, you will end up going forward and falling and getting in all kind of traps of the enemy, and he will throw you. Yes. Because he knows what you like. Right. We used to follow Satan before we came to Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. When Brother Paul was used by the Holy Ghost to write about spiritual gifts, he said, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That's right. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, Gentiles. carried away unto these dumb idols, even as, as ye were, were led. led. Mm -hmm. Jump over to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's notice verse 1. Mm -hmm. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the, power of the air. That's, That's right. Sin. That's right. Now, a lot of people say the devil has no power, but they don't understand. The enemy of God has power power. The Bible calls him. This God, God told Paul to write this. He called him the prince of the power, power of, of the, the air. air. So yeah. all of these, you know, this is what I don't understand about this nation. These other nations that don't serve the God of heaven, the only true and living God, when they go through all kinds of catastrophes, dealing with weather, dealing with, with floods, dealing with tsunamis dealing with earthquakes and this and that and their whole their whole city or their whole state gets ruined the question is why 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 did it get ruined why did it get flooded out why, why? listen when you follow Satan you will get what Satan gets. Because there's nothing good about him. Nothing. Not one thing. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's been a murderer since the beginning. He goes against God. He's, he is contrary to God. There, there's a lot of people that are in secret societies and secret fellowships and secret organizations, and you don't even know what they really believe in when you join these things. 
you do it for prestige and because it makes you look good. But you don't understand something. The devil is not going to come to you and say, here I am. He's not going to do that. Even in the Garden of Eden, when he appeared in the garden after God put Adam in there, he told Adam to dress it and to keep it. That was Adam's ministry. To dress it meaning to decorate the garden. To keep it means to protect the garden. So everything in the garden, Adam was to guard. He was to protect. So when the enemy came in there, he didn't come in as himself because he would have been the most ugliest thing in the garden. But what he did is he used the body of a serpent. Yes. And when he came in there, uh -huh. Adam and Eve fell because they didn't they 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 didn't act according to the anointing that they were crowned with. That's right. Mm -mm, not at all. That's right. Adam was supposed to guard the God, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Right. While the enemy was talking through the body of this serpent, talking to Eve because they were made in such a way at the time before the fall that they could understand things that we'll never be able to understand. They could understand sounds and languages and things that we just couldn't understand. We'll never be able to get there. The serpent was talking to Eve and he challenged her. He said, did God really say? Did God really say? Right. So anything that Eve knew about the garden, she not learned it from her husband, right. but that lie, she did not learn from her husband. That's right. When she stepped out of order, her vision was off. Satan set her up. Her operation was off mm -hmm. because she was out of order. She should have turned to her husband and said, honey, help me. That's right. Honey, protect me. That's right. Honey, didn't you say God told you to guard the garden? And then even if she didn't do that, which she didn't, Adam should have said, excuse me, why are you talking to my wife? That's right. Why are you interfering with my wife? What, what do you want? Get out of here. He had the authority to put Satan out of the garden. Now, at another time, we'll talk about why Satan did this. He wanted to throw everything out of whack. Yes. And that's what he tries to do now. Right. When you look at this world, this world is going through problems. There's corruption on the forefront. Yes. When you look at the government, corruption. Yes. When you look in the place that they say is the place of worship, corruption right. and carnality right. how many ways but let's look at this for a minute in the ministries they're so busy trying to get into the political arena and the the taking sides politically when that has nothing to do with you nothing you are supposed to be under theocracy right. and not bureaucracy right when you have surrendered to god when you really follow him, right. he becomes your president. He becomes your governor. He becomes your mayor. He becomes your alderman. He becomes your senator. Of course, he tells us to pray for those in authority because we, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, following the real Jesus, not the other Jesus or any other Jesus, but the real Jesus, we have authority in Christ because we are joint in. We are not of this world. That's right. We're in it, but we're not of, it. not of it. And that's another problem, because a lot of people who say they follow the Lord, they're very carnal, very carnal. Turn your Bible back to 1 Corinthians, and let's notice chapter 3. Verse 1, Brother Paul said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 
I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. He said before you couldn't bear it, now you can't bear it. You have not even grown. Then he said, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You're not walking as spiritual children of God, but you're walking carnal as regular natural men and women. For while one saith, I am of Paul, right. and another, I am of Apollos, Apollos, are ye not carnal? So now he's telling them that you are choosing or lifting up the minister. Yeah, one lift up, some lifted up Paul, some lifted up Apollos. Both of them were apostles, but the people were lifting up the leader and not lifting up Christ. That's right. Brother Paul said, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers, meaning servants, by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man, now he asked a question, so I'm going to read it that way. Right. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe? Even as the Lord gave to every man? And leaders are wrong for allowing you to lift them up like that. That's not humility. So therefore, when ministers fall, when they get exposed, when they get caught up in something, the people are surprised and say, <coughs> excuse me, and they say, oh my goodness, did you, you know what pastor did or apostle did or, or, or prophet or prophetess did or evangelist did or the teacher did? Oh my goodness. Why are you surprised? Why, why are you surprised? You shouldn't be. In 1 Corinthians, still, Chapter 10, verse 13, Brother Paul was led to write, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. That's right. To struggle is common. To go through things are common. I know that you look at the minister and think that, Oh, glory, I hear you, Lord. And think the minister got it, yes. Think the minister got it all together, but the minister don't. The higher the minister is in the Lord, the harder the trials they're going to go through. I'll tell you, it's easy to walk in the pastoral office. Now, those of y'all that are pastors, you say it's not. I understand that. But those of us that are apostles, God use us. We're the only us, us men. We are the only apostles, the only office that walks in all four of the other ones. Women are not apostles. This, this is not scripture. It's not in the word. So I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking to the brothers. Mm -hmm. And those of you brothers that are in the office of apostles, you understand. We are the only ones that walk in all four of the other offices. So it's easy to walk as pastor. That, that's easy. I, we could do that with our eyes closed. It's easy to evangelize, to walk as an evangelist. We could do that with our eyes closed. It's easy to walk as a prophet. We can do that with our eyes closed. A prophet is a male. Prophetess is a female. So get it right, sisters. Those sisters that are in the prophetic office, stop saying you are a prophet because you're not. You're a prophetess. That's what the Bible says. Now, you got to be careful because if you're confused about your gender, then you need to sit down. It's easy to walk as a teacher. It's, it's, it's easy when you learn. When you learn, it's easy. When you study the word, it's easy. When you're anointed to explain the word, it's easy to walk as a teacher. But when you are standing in the office of apostle and the Holy Ghost has anointed you to walk in all four of the other offices, can you imagine the trial that we have to face? That's right. Even in marriage, 
we can't just marry anyone and have That's a right. peaceful marriage That's like right. a lot of other people do. That's right. I, listen, every office has trials set for that anointing and that office. Tell it, brother. So I understand the trials of a prophet because I'm part prophet. I understand, and, and brother apostles, you can test, you can attest to this. We apostles understand the trials of an evangelist because we're part evangelist. We understand the trials of a pastor because we're part pastor. We understand the trials of a teacher because we're part teacher. But a teacher does not understand the trial of an apostle. The prophet does not understand the trial of an apostle. If you're a prophet, I strongly encourage you and suggest that you stay right there. <laughs> you do, Stay right there. Amen. That's what God called you to do. Amen. If he's anointed you as a prophet, stay there. Amen. Don't try to jump up and you want to elevate yourself and become an apostle. Don't do it. Because if you can't handle the trial that comes with this office, you will fall. If you're an evangelist, don't try to jump up and be pastor. Because if you can't handle the trial of a pastor, you will fall. Don't be, uh, if, if, if you're a pastor, don't jump up trying to be a prophet. Don't jump up trying to be an apostle. Don't do it. Because if you can't handle the trials we go through, you will fall. That's right. If you're a, what they call a minister, a, 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 a music minister, mm -hmm. which actually that would be a psalmist, a psalmist, a psalmist. but a some have went in error and entered into the pastoral office. Mm -hmm. There's people that even get doctorates because they buy it or they have an uncle or a cousin or a relative who is able to give them a doctorate. But the way you tell a teacher is a teacher comes out of this book and will not walk away from it and just build a whole sermon on one word or one verse. That's right. That's a preacher. Right. That's, that's not a teacher. Right. A lot of you are, 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 are at ministries where the person you think is a teacher is really not. How can you tell? You might want to know. Again. Notice I'm standing in the Word. I ain't even got nothing written. And all of this is coming straight off the press in heaven. Again, in the book of Hebrews. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I hope you're ready, brother. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. I am. In the book of Hebrews. What chapter? Again, verse chapter 6. Oh. Verse 1. Brother Paul said, therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, we need to go on. Stop, stop staying there. And there's, there's some ministries you're going to. Here's the test. Bring a, bring a notebook and a pen. And take notes from the lesson. That's right. When you go home, Compare the note. Each week, compare it. Are you hearing the same thing over and over again? Better yet, go in Scripture and look up what you're being told. Is it coming out of the Word? Or do you see error? If you're not getting fed, then that leader need to sit down and you need to stop lifting them up and lift up the Lord God the Lord Jesus Christ we're getting ready to in our segment back to 2nd Chronicles chapter 18 Jehoshaphat he was the king of Judah and Ahab was going to go against Ramoth Gilead. But Ahab asked Jehoshaphat, would he, would he posse up with him? Would he, would he side with him? 
people? Would he join with them? Can we network? I need some help. All of us in ministry need help. That's right. We, we do. That's right. Even though apostles are used by God in all four of the other offices, it's, it's a blessing if when God uses us to walk with someone that's in one of them offices, that takes a little weight off of us. That's right. Because when you got to walk in all four of the offices, it's a blessing. And thank you, Lord, for using us apostles that way. But we are team players, and we love to see God use the other gifts. You might say, wow, well, apostle is hard. That's because we are, are used by the Lord to uh, encourage you to walk according to your calling and your election. That's right. To make it sure. In other words, to prove, make full proof of the ministry the service God called you to do. So apostles are going to be tough. We're not going to be soft and passive and, and oh, poor thing. Those are pastors. We, we, we're not going to be that way. We're not. we got to be tough because Jesus will be coming back soon. And, 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 and we don't want to be left behind. Ahab asked Jehoshaphat to go with him. And when Jehoshaphat went to go visit Ahab, he killed sheep and oxen, a whole bunch of them, and enough to feed the people that were with him. And he persuaded him to go up to Ram of Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, southern Israel, Wilt thou go with me to Ram of Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art. In other words, yes. Where you go, I'll go. I'm with you. I'm on one accord with you. And my people as thy people. That's right. And we will be with thee in the war. So I said, yes. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee. At the word of the Lord today. Today. Let, let's pray about this. Right. But, but, you know, theologically, prayer is a two-sided conversation between man and God. Man talks, woman talks, God listens. Then after we pour ourselves out, it's important to stay still and wait and let God respond. And if you can't hear God's voice because you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, get into the Word, look up the subject you're praying about and see what the word says about it. Then you'll know the answer. Because when people use a cliche, or oh, I'll pray about it, they're lying. Mm -hmm. Even in relationship, mm -hmm. a man meets a woman and say, you know, the Lord said, you'd make a good wife. He, he told me to pursue you. Well, I'll pray about it. Okay, now, those of us that are prayer warriors and that have a relationship with God, what we know when, a, when we say we'll pray about it, that means we turn our plate down. That's that right. means we spend some time with That's God. Right. That's we right. sit before him and say, That's Lord, right. yes. yay or nay. Yes. But when people say that and don't do it, mm -hmm. they're carnal. Right. And then when they come three or four days later, and you ask them, did God answer yet? No, nah, he didn't. Well, did you ask him? No, nah, I've been busy. Carnal. And right there, guess what? Carnal. Carnal. They are purely carnal. Yes. Purely carnal. Yes. And God said, everybody saying, Lord, Lord, is not going to heaven. That's right. Just because they go to some ministry, just because they say, Lord, just because they do this, just because they, they, they do what they call shout, which a lot of times that's pure emotion. Just because they do all that, just because ministers are throw something in the air and make you fall or blow their breath, stinking breath sometimes, on you, and make, on you and make you fall, that don't mean that they are powerful. It don't mean they're going to heaven. And it really don't mean that God called them. Right. Just because they got on the collar, it don't mean God called them. That's right. Mm -mm. Witches and warlocks wear collars. That's right. Not only that, homosexual ministers who God don't even have nothing to do with, they wear collars. Right. Because they got to appear to be the real deal. And if you don't know the real deal, then you're stuck. That's right. 
So Jehoshaphat said, can we talk to the Lord about this? Because the, the real minister, the man and woman of God, we know, don't take no step if God don't say go. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together a prophet, 400 men. Now, this is what Ahab did. Now, those of you that know about his wife Jezebel, when she left her father's palace and married Ahab, she came with 850 false prophets. There was 450 prophets and there was 400. Ahab got together the 400 men, the prophets, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And they said, excuse me, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, mm -mm. is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? A lot of ministers, <laughs> a lot of ministers won't use the prophet and prophetess of the house. Why? Because they know the mess that that minister and that ministry got going on. That's right. So what they do is they'll call somebody that's going to tell them what they want to hear. They'll call their nephew or their family or their best friend or the one they do the dirt with or the one they sin with. In some cases, the one they sleep with. And they say to them, come and speak and have a speaking engagement. Here's what y'all sheep don't know. There's ministers that have fundraisers and call it a speaking engagement because they're exchanging money. I'll come to your ministry and put 500 in. You come to mine and put 500 in. Neither one of them are going to the house of God because God is not in that mess. He's not in that. And then when they come with contracts, this is what I want to get paid. So now you want to get paid for ministry. Then they do the free will offer. I got to tell you, I got to tell you the truth. When they come with the contract and they get paid, that's earned income and they got to pay taxes on that. But when they say, all right, I'm going to collect also a free will offering, that is a donation and they don't have to even report that to the IRS. So you've been had. You've been took, hood away. You, right. You've been bamboozled. <laughs> You've been led astray. You've been run amok. Been this is what's going on in these places of worship. And that's why God allowed that coronavirus spirit to be launched out by Satan to come and to close the places that y'all call the place of worship. We get ready to close, but because we got to hit on that note right there. But the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, "There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah." And Jehoshaphat said, "Let not the king say so. Don't, don't speak bad about the brother." Then call him. Let me meet him. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne clothed in their robes. So they had on their guard, okay, their clergy guard, looking all good and deep. And they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. They sat wearing rich apparel. They had it going on. They were looking good. And they sat uh, on the throne and while they were sitting there, all the prophets prophesied. They, they, made, a, they, they made fools out of themselves, you might as well say. Because what happened was Zedekiah, the son of Canaanor, had made him horns of iron. Now, how did he do that? He must have picked up some iron and did like this, I don't know, and <laughs> said, 
Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. He was whack. So Canaanor built his prophetic ministry on a sign. And that's what a lot of people do. They're building the ministry on a sign. And you can't do that. You can't do that. Because when you do that, you end up in error. That's carnal also. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have Satisfied mind with free.